What up, what up? Wimbush here. Today I'm excited to show you guys how I made this. Something tells me I'm not gonna like this. Now I made this with a combination of Cinema 4D, Mixamo, and Unreal Engine. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So right now what you're looking at is actually the real-time playback inside of Unreal Engine. It's running at 60 FPS. I have ray tracing enabled right here. I'm using a Mixamo rig, which you can see there's a little bit of issues with the weight painting in here. But I created this real quick last night. Just wanted to get something up and running because I was really excited about the new Aura Pack that came out on the Pixel Labs. And so that's what you see here in the background i kind of wanted to bring it into unreal and then i figured hey you know i'm a big halo fan why not let's throw master chief in here and this is what i came up with and so i'm going to attempt to show you guys how i created this from scratch and so let's jump right into it all right first things first i got this master chief halo 5 3d model from the render hub so i'll leave this link down below but basically if you go to renderhub.com and just search halo 5 you'll come up with a whole bunch of free models from halo 5 this guy rip van winkle actually ripped like all the characters out of the game so it's pretty cool it's really high textured really high poly i mean it's pretty amazing and so i would just make an account here and download this free figure here and then if you want to get his battle rifle i got that one from sketchfab so if i come here and i search for halo rifle and then click right here where it says download you can actually see there's a bunch of people that made a bunch of different halo weapons on here we have the plasma rifle we have the beam rifle we have the dmr and if you click on download that means that you'll only show the ones that you can actually download so this is the one that i actually downloaded here so this is the assault rifle and so again just go to sketchfab.com search in halo rifle and this is what you'll come up with and then you'll be able to follow along with the tutorial here so what you're seeing right now is Master Chief inside of Cinema 4D in which if I download that file from the render hub, this is exactly what you'll get here. So you'll have a couple of different 3D options here. You have a DAE file and then you'll have two files here that say 3D object. I believe I used the one that was higher in size. So this one was around 4.2 megabytes. And then you'll have a bunch of textures in here as well. So all I did was take this one here that was around four megabytes just click and drag that into Cinema 4D. And then for the OBJ importer, I just clicked OK. And this is exactly what you'll come up with. He'll be a little bit transparent here, but that's the easy fix. I'm going to click right here on my null point inside of my hierarchy window. Just click this down and where it says front light panel. That's just this panel here. We don't really need it. So I'm just going to delete it. And then if I want to get rid of the transparency here, I'm going to just click one of the random materials down here at the bottom. Double click on it. And it's going to bring up our material editor but before i do anything here i'm actually going to left click and select everything down here so i could do everything in one full sweep here because basically i'm going to get rid of the transparency with the alpha channel and everything should be good from there so right here where it says alpha and let me actually click this over so you can see what's going to happen so where it says alpha i'm actually going to uncheck mark this and there you go so now we have all of our textures in here and everything but if i come back to my folder you can actually see that we have some normals in here. Actually, if I come over to my main folder and I'll right click, if you have Adobe Bridge, I would suggest using that. So I'm going to click on Adobe Bridge 2021. And that just gives me a better view of how all my textures look. So you can see that it actually comes with more than just the albedo file. We have the normal maps for some of them too. And then we have some specular maps in which I'm just going to use the normal maps for this. And so if you look in here, you can see that it doesn't have the normal maps on here. So I would just go through and kind of correlate with what goes with what. I'm not going to go through the full process here, but basically I think it was for his helmet and his visor. It supplies some normal maps here. So I'm just going to stick with the albedo file and normal maps on there. So I'm actually going to close this one out and go to my one I already have set up here in which you can see I have my normal maps in here and then everything else looks fine. So the next step from here is we want to export this out so we can actually use it in Mixamo. So I'm going to close down my material editor. I'm just going to select everything in here and then I'm going to come over to file and then come down to export and then I'm going to come down to FBX. So once I click on that, I have my FBX export settings here in which I'm not going to go through the entire process of how to rig this in Mixamo. I actually did a separate video on that. So I'll link that in the description down below. Or if you want to click up above, you can just find that on how you can go through all the different steps to actually just update it. So now we could take FBX 2019 files in which I'm going to leave it at right here. 
and then I'm going to leave it on selection only, which I have everything selected, but you don't really have to. And then everything else here, I'm just going to leave at default. So I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to come over to this folder that I just made called Mixamo. And I'm going to name this one Master Chief underscore Mixamo. And click Save. And there we have an FBX file. And then if I come over to my Chrome browser, I already have them set up in Mixamo. Like I said, make sure you check out my video on how to do the auto rigging, but it's pretty simple. I'm sure you know how to do it at this point. And so now that I have Master Chief inside of Mixamo here, all I have to do is find like a good animation that I want to use. So if I come over to search, maybe let's find idle. And let me look for something, something pretty simple here. So maybe if we did something like that, where he's just kind of in the idle stance right there. It's about 300 frames. That looks pretty decent to me. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm just going to actually click download. And then I like working at 60 frames per second. So I'm going to bring this down to 60. I'm going to leave it with skin, keyframe reduction, leave that at none. And of course, FBX. So I'm going to click on download from here. And once it's downloaded, it's actually going to give you a file here that's going to be named after the animation mocap data that you picked out of Mixamo. I dragged it into my Mixamo folder here already, and it's just called idle. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click and drag this idle information back into Cinema 4D. And the reason that I'm bringing it in here, I could take this directly to Unreal Engine. What I like to do is I like to make sure that my sizing and everything on my characters are correct before I bring it into Unreal. Sometimes if I go straight from Mixamo into Unreal Engine, the character sizing can be a little bit off. And so I like to bring it back into Cinema 4D just to make sure in which he looks really tiny in here. So I'm actually going to select everything here. I'm going to come over to Object. I'm going to group my object. Then I'm actually going to name this one halo i'm actually going to copy it and paste it into his new scene like i know you could come down to takes and delete this but i just like starting in a new scene whenever i drag my stuff over from mixamo it makes it a lot cleaner and i've never run into any issues so what i'm going to do is start a new project then i'm just going to paste my file into here and then i'm just going to zero everything out here in my coordinates and then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on a little cube here and come down to figure just so I have some reference. This figure is a little bit shorter than six feet, I believe. And so that gives me a good reference point. I think Master Chief is maybe like six, five or six, seven. I know he's pretty tall there. And so I'm just going to actually come down to my null point here that I have all my Master Chief stuff in. And I'm actually going to scale this up. I believe it was like 150 on the X, Y and Z somewhere around there so he looks like he's a little bit taller that looks like a good size in there and as you can see he's really really shiny and that's the easy fix again i'm just going to double click on one of my materials here select all of them come back to reflectance and actually got rid of my ggx so i'm actually going to remove these come back down to ggx make this one percent and we should be good to go there so there we go. Now we have Master Chief inside of our scene. I can actually delete this reference out. And if I click on, actually, if I scroll this out and hit Control D, make sure I'm in 60 frames per second here. And then I'm not sure if it matters, but I'm going to come up to my render settings and make sure my frame right here is at 60 as well. And then if I click play, there we go. We have our idle information for Master Chief. He's just standing there kind of breathing. And there is one caveat. If I look in here, you can see that it kind of stretched our helmet out in which you can easily fix that with weight painting. But, and this is a whole tutorial in itself in which my friend EJ AKA I design actually did on the Maxon 3D Roadshow. And so I'll link that in the description below as well, because that's like, you know, a whole half hour tutorial in itself. And so I'm just going to leave it at this just so I can show you guys how we can bring this into Unreal Engine. So what I'm going to do is actually select all of this stuff out, drag it outside of the null point. And then I'm going to click on my Mixamo rig and just see, make sure I have enough frames there in which it looks like he dropped down to the scene, but that should be fine. So my next step from here is I'm actually just going to select everything here, come over to file, come down to export. And again, I'm going to export it out as an FBX and I'm going to leave everything as is here. So just 2019 for the FBX selection only, which I have everything selected and I'm going to click OK. Then I'm just going to name this one Halo underscore UE underscore ready. Just so I know that this FBX file is the one that I want to bring into Unreal. So I'm going to click on save. 
And there we go. Now we have Master Chief all set up and ready to bring into Unreal. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking that's a lot of steps just to get everything prepped up, but I like taking extra precautions. And so that's why I was going back and forth between Mixamo and Cinema 4D a lot, because I wanna make sure that when I bring my stuff over, it's precise and I don't have any problems. So from here, I'm actually on the Pixel Labs website. You can use one of these environments if you want. It's called the Aura Pack, it just came out. And so this is one of the reasons that I came up with this project because I was looking at this as he posted it on Twitter and I thought some of these look really cool. Like I like this, this is the one that we're gonna be using. It's called the Sci-Fi Tunnel. And then actually he put up my render up there. I put this up last night. So that was really cool. Shout out to Jordan for that. It, if you look through these, I mean, it's pretty cool. It says free monthly updates for up to 15 environments. And so if you look down here, it comes in like two flavors. They actually have it in Wrist Shift and Octane. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to flip it so that I can use it inside of Unreal Engine. And so again, I'll leave this down below if you want to follow along and use this pack here. I believe it's only 99 bucks. Let me scroll all the way to the bottom here. Yep, it's only 99 bucks. So if you guys want to follow along or if you want to use your own scene, you're welcome to. But let me show you how I flip this right here into being able to use an Unreal Engine. So this is what it looks like when I have it inside of Cinema 4D. As you can see, this is a red shift scene, which I don't have red shift on this version of Cinema. I'm using R23, but I'm still able to see the geometry, which is what I really want. And it still shows me the different materials down here as well. So if I come over here, you can see that we don't see anything under sci-fi scene. That's because we have to come over the window and then we actually have to come down to the layer manager. And right here under the M, if I click on this, this should open everything up here for me. So now I can see everything that's inside of the scene. Of course, I'm not gonna see any of the redshift stuff because again, I don't have redshift on this version of cinema. So I'm just actually gonna start deleting some of this stuff out. So I'm gonna click on my sci-fi tunnel, drag this out, and I'm actually gonna just delete that and delete my camera. And basically all I want here is my geometry and I wanna be able to replace these materials inside of Unreal. And so I'm gonna do some prep work here inside of Cinema 4D in which, I mean, there's only a couple materials on this particular one, so it's pretty simple. So I'm gonna double click here and I'm actually just gonna name this one Sci-Fi. Then if I hold down the left click on my keyboard, click and drag it, it's actually gonna replace that material. So now instead of having a rich shift material, I have a native Cinema 4D material, which I could bring into Unreal Engine. And so I'll do the same thing. I'll show you how to do it on an emissive texture right here. So if I double click, and then if I name this one Floor Lights, and then if I double click on it, and I turn the color off, turn off Reflectance, come over to Luminance, this is gonna give me like a light texture that's emissive that once I bring it into Unreal, it's actually gonna be emissive as real. So I'm just gonna turn this off, come down to my keyboard, hold the left alt button, left click, drag and replace. And so as you can see, it replaced it with a native Cinema 4D material. And basically that's what I did for all these materials here. I'm not gonna go through each step here, but, but if you wanna be able to bring your scene from Cinema 4D into Unreal Engine, basically you have to use native Cinema 4D material. So I just went through and replaced all these here. So when it's all said and done, this is basically how I have my setup here. So these are all native Cinema 4D materials here in which now I'm ready to bring this into Unreal Engine. And so there is one step we have to take before we bring this into Unreal. So on my keyboard, if I hit Control D, and let me scroll this up, I wanna click on the Cineware tab and you wanna make sure that you have Save Polygon Cache on. And then I have Save Material Cache. I don't have any animations, so I'm not gonna click on Save Animation Cache, but Everything in here is just a basic Cinema 4D material. So I don't have to worry about, you know, like the format, if I want to have PNGs or even the resolution, because again, I don't have any textures or anything attached to these. And so I can basically bring them over as is. So we no longer have to save these out for Cineware, which is really cool. I did a tutorial on that as well. So make sure you check out my channel, but basically all we have to do is save out our Cinema 4D project and we're good to go. So I'm actually just going to hit Control S on here. And then I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna launch a new Unreal Engine project. So I'm gonna come over to library. I'm gonna use version of 4.26. I'm gonna click launch here. And once I have my Unreal project browser up, I'm gonna click down here on film, television, and live events, click on next. Then I'm gonna start with a blank slate, click on next again. Right here where it says ray tracing disabled, I'm gonna click on that and actually enable ray tracing. I do have an RTX card. And then I'm just gonna leave this down here where it says my project, that's just the default. I'm gonna leave it on my SSD drive. 
click create project. And then once Unreal Engine starts up, we're just gonna have to enable the Cinema 4D plugin. And then it's gonna be just basically dragging and dropping everything from there. So we have Unreal Engine opened up. I'm gonna click on my content browser. Then I'm gonna come over here to settings, come down to plugins. And I'm just gonna come up to the search bar, type in C4D, which that's gonna bring up the Datasmith importer. I'm gonna click enable. And I'm just gonna click yes here. It's basically telling you that it's still in beta. So I'm gonna click yes. And then down here in the lower right, it's gonna ask me to restart, which I'm gonna restart it because it doesn't really take too long. Basically, it's just gonna activate the plugin and make sure that we're ready to go. All right, so now everything's restarted. I could close this out. And you can see now we have the Datasmith plugin in here. Down here in the lower right it says, would you like to update your project? I'm just gonna click update. There we go. So I'm gonna actually come over here. I'm gonna delete this floor plane. I'm gonna delete this controller here for player start. Then actually I'm gonna delete my atmospheric fog. I'm gonna delete my source light because I'm gonna actually just use internal lighting from the scene. Then right here, I'm gonna delete the sky sphere. And I'm just gonna leave basically my skylight and my reflection capture. So I'm gonna bring in my scene from Cinema 4D first, the Pixel Lab one. So I'm gonna click on Datasmith. Then I'm just actually gonna find where I have my Cinema 4D project at, which I have it here, Sci-Fi Tunnel. And then I'm just gonna click on my little save project here, click open. And then I'm gonna save it to my content folder, click okay. And then I'm gonna leave everything check marked on here and just click import. And there we go. That only took like a few seconds, but if I hold down the right click on my mouse button, hit the W, and actually if I scroll up, it makes it go faster. But I could just scroll into my scene here. And there we go. So now we have the sci-fi hallway in here. We have our native Cinema 4D textures in here and everything. And before I bring Master Chief in, I'm actually going to texture the scene and I'm going to do it with Mega Scan. So basically, it's just going to be drag and drop and bring everything into my scene here. So I'm actually going to open up bridge here from quixel in which if you don't have a quixel account it's free with your unreal account so all you have to do is go to quixel.com make sure you download bridge and you'll have the complete library of mega scan materials and assets at your disposal so let me actually make this larger i'm going to find the one that i actually used last night which is this one right here so i actually used this for the floor i thought this marble tiling looked pretty cool and so what i'm going to do is click on this gear here Make sure I have everything set up for Unreal Engine. So right here where it says export settings, click on this and my export target, I just wanna make sure it's for Unreal version 4.26, which it is. So I'm gonna click back and I'm actually gonna click export. And this should just take a few moments to export out to Unreal. And there we go. So now I have my texture right here, as you can see, all ready to go. If I double click on it, you can see we have all the attributes are ready to go. So if you want to do tiling or if you want to change the albedo color, stuff like that, you have all these different assets at your disposal. And so I'm just gonna actually leave it at default there. And I'm actually gonna click on one of the floor panels. And if I look right here where it says the magnifying glass, I'm gonna click on that because it's gonna find it in our content browser. So I'm gonna double click on this and I'm actually gonna change the material from with here. So it's basically gonna change it overall for all of them. So if I come back over here to my content browser and I click on content, come over to mega scans, find where I have my material, which is right here. I'm actually just gonna drag and drop this right here. And now you can see that it actually changed it out right there. So I have my marble tiling there, which I can actually probably scale that down a little bit there. So let me click this over a little bit. And this is where I have in like an ultra wide monitor or door monitors kind of helps out because now you can see my screen's getting a little bit crowded. But let me look over here under my parameters where it says tiling and scaling. I'm gonna click on this one. And then for tiling, let's, what it, let's see what it looks like if it's at five by five, which that looks pretty cool. Maybe let's drop it down to three. So somewhere around there. So I'm gonna click on save. And then I'm actually gonna click save here. So now basically all I have to do is select all my tiles that I have in here in my scene. There we go, like so. And then down here on our lower right hand corner where we have our materials, I'm gonna click this one where it says reset the default. And now we have all of our textures for our tiles there. It looks like I missed two. So I'm gonna select these two here, do the same thing. And boom, there we go. So now we have our floor textures all textured out. And so next I wanna do these little columns here in the hallway. So I'm actually gonna go back to Mega Scans and I'm gonna find 
I had this metal texture. Let me see, metal. So I had like this blue metal texture. Actually, this one right here. I'm gonna click on this and just export this out for Unreal. And I think that's all the textures I'm gonna bring over for this example. So I'm gonna close this out and then come down here to surfaces. There we go. So I have hot blue right there. And yeah, there we go. So actually for these doors, I'm gonna select both of these and then I'm just gonna click and drag these like that. So now I have the blue on my doors here. Then same thing for my column, just click and drag it like so. And then for my pillars, I'm actually gonna do it the same way I did the floor here. So I'm gonna click on the magnifying glass, double click on the pillar, and then I'm gonna come over, find my mega scan materials and their surfaces, click and drag it like so. And then I'm gonna click on save. Then I'm just gonna go through real quick I'm just going to select all these. I probably won't do all of them just to try to make this tutorial a little bit shorter. So let's see, maybe just the ones that we have in view. So I'm going to come back down here to materials, click on reset the default, and there we go. So now we have our hallway all set and ready to go. And then for the lights here, so if I click on maybe like one of these light strips, I come down here, click on the magnifying glass. It shows me all the textures that I have correlated with that one. And so actually these are all the Cinema 4D materials here. So I'm going to start with the floor lights. I'm actually going to double click on it. And right here where it says immersive color, I'm actually going to make this a little bit bluer. So somewhere around there. And then for the glow, I'm actually going to jack this up really, really high. I'm going to click on save. And you can see it's not making that big of a deal inside of our scene. And that's because we have to add a post-process volume so that we're able to flex around with the different, you know, the blooms and the lens flares and things of that nature. So I'm going to come over to visual effects and it should be at the top here. So it's called post-process volume. I'm going to click and drag this into my scene. And once I have it in my scene, actually I'm going to zero it out. So it's in the center. We don't really need to see it, but it's in the center there. So what I'm going to do now inside the search panel, I'm going to type in UNB and then when it says infinite extent unbound, if I drag this over so you can fully see it, I'm going to check mark this on. And basically what this does is everything that I do inside a post process volume is now going to engulf the entire scene, not just that small cube. So I'm going to click on the X here and let's just see what our bloom settings are going to do. So if I click on method here under bloom standard and then intensity, now we can see the glow effects that our materials from cinema has. So I'm actually going to lower this down a tad bit. And actually, let me scroll down here under exposure. I'm going to click these on. I'm going to do a basic exposure here. Then I can lower this down a little bit as well. So this is going to be a lot of back and forth here. This is where you're going to really fine tune your scene and everything else. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time in here, but I mean, it's really cool, all the different attributes that we have to play around with inside of Unreal Engine. So I'm going to say, maybe I'll mess with these lights right here. I'm going to turn these up a little bit. Actually, let me make these a little bit blue as well. And then turn the emissive up and you can see it actually happening there on the panels here on the left hand side. Let me make these a little bit more bluish here. You can see the core reflections that we have on the ground there. I'm going to click OK. There you go. So like I was saying, it could be a lot of back and forth, just kind of dialing these into how you want them. So for my bloom, if I turn up. Yeah, see if I turn it up too high, it gets a little bit flickery in here. So I probably have my floor lights a little bit too high in here. So I'm going to turn these down a tad bit. So I kind of overdid it there. I just wanted to show you guys the example, but something like that looks pretty cool. You can see we have a real time lens flare going on as well, which I have control over that. If I scroll down a little bit, let's see right here where it says lens flare. I can actually come over to intensity, turn this down a little bit, and then bokeh size. If I want to make it a little bit larger. So something like that could be cool. So I think I'm not going to play around with these too much longer. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to bring Master Chief into our scene. So I'm going to come down here to the content browser. I'm going to right click, make a new folder. I'm just going to name it Halo. Double click on it. And then I'm going to click on this big green button here where it says add an import. So I want to come up and import to game right here. So where it says import asset, I want to import right here. 
and then I'm just going to find that Master Chief that I had saved out from Mixamo. So I believe it was this one. And there we go. Halo underscore UE underscore ready. So naming conventions are important for me just so whenever I'm working on other stuff, I know that this is the thing that I was working on previously that I want to bring into Unreal. So I'm going to click on open. And then there's not too much to select here on the FBX import options. Under animation, you want to make sure you have this clicked on and exported time, which I'm going to leave alone. And then everything else, I'm just going to leave at default. So I'm going to click import all. And then I'm going to close out this message log here. And if you look down here inside of our folder, now we have all of our textures. You could go in and manipulate them any way that you want. But what I want to find right here is my master chief that's underscored with this pinkish purplish bar here. So I'm going to click and drag this into my scene like so. Then if I come over here to my raw outliner, double click on them, that brings them more into the scene here, which I could drag them up something like that. And I'm actually going to turn off the snapping tools here just so I could kind of make it a little bit more precise there. So something like that looks pretty cool. We have the master chief in here, which I could start adding lights just to kind of give them, you know, some highlights from the back and kind of give them some cool shadows in the front. But first, let me bring in our animation. So I'm going to come over here to where it says cinematics. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to add a level sequence, which is basically our timeline. So I'm just going to leave it at new level sequence for right now. I'm going to click on save. And then you see this pop up right here. And this is basically our timeline. So what I'm going to do from here is click on Master Chief in the world outliner. I'm going to click and drag him down into here. And then right here where it says animation, I'm going to click on this. And I'm just we only have one animation in here. So I'm going to click on that. And it looks like it actually dropped them down. Remember in Cinema 4D how it dropped it below the the zero line there so i mean it's really easy i'm just going to click and drag them back up for the most part something like that and then if i scroll through here now we have master chief he says the one is idle stance there and if i come right here where it says 30 fps i'm going to clock it at 60 and maybe let's do a thousand frames in here so i'm going to drag this all the way to the end and right here i'm just going to set my bracket to the end and I can actually just click and drag this all the way to the end. So now it's just basically going to loop in here. So if I come down here, scroll in a little bit and click the play button. There we go. So now we have Master Chief. He's just in the idle loop animation and he's in our scene and ready to go. So now that we have Master Chief in here, the next step from here is I'm just going to throw some lights in here. Then I'm going to throw in the camera. Then I'm going to show you how we could do the depth of field and we should be set from there. So what I'm going to do is come over. Actually, I'm going to stop this, drag this over to the very beginning. And let me actually add in a camera first. So I'm going to come over here to cinematics and right here where it says center camera actor. I'm going to click and drag this into my scene in which you can see we have the picture in picture, but I want to actually look through my camera. So what I'm going to do is come over here to perspective, click on cinematic viewport, and then I'm going to click on perspective again and click on the camera. So say we're happy with like this camera setup right here. Actually, let me come over here and move the rotation a little bit. So I'm going to move this down to zero. And I'm just using the transform tools just to make it a little bit more precise here. So let's say that we're happy with that right there. So I don't want to move my camera at all. So what I'm going to do is actually eject myself from the camera. I can still see the picture in picture whenever I have my camera selected. But what I'm going to do now is just come over and just add like a couple of point lights here. So we're getting some really cool highlights off the helmet and things of that nature. I'm just going to drag it back a little bit. And what I want to do is instead of stationary, I'm going to click movable. That makes sure that everything is dynamic lighting. We don't have to worry about baking or anything of that nature. And then I'm going to come down here to light color. Actually, let me add like a bluish hue to it. Something like that. And then I'm going to hold down the Alt key and select this right here and just drag it. And that's actually going to make a duplicate. As you can see, which I'm going to have highlighting Master Chief, maybe from the side there, something like that. And we're not actually seeing our lights in our scene. So all you have to do is select something in here, hit G. And now we can actually see all of our icons and everything. So we can see how we have everything positioned in which I think something like that is looking pretty cool. Maybe let me add one more light. 
so i'm going to drag this one back and right here under intensity maybe drop this down to like three somewhere around there and then let me come back to perspective look inside my camera see how everything's looking which i think that looks pretty cool there i could probably knock down the bloom a little bit so if i come back to my post process volume knock this down a tad bit there something like that and it looks like it's really out of focus on him here so what i'm going to do is actually i'm going to click on my camera drag it down to my timeline here and then that gives us a bunch of you know like our aperture settings and our length and things of that nature so i'm just going to play around with these so you can see it sharpened them up in here and if i mess around with my manual focus distance you can see that we're getting some really cool depth of field then i'll just mess with my aperture so it's all about messing around with these settings in here something like that and then some other stuff we could do is come over to post process volume come down to my exposure settings and right here where it says min and max ev100 i like setting these to one there we go so that gives us a little bit cool cinematic lighting and stuff in there so i'm just going to mess with that so after playing around with my settings a little bit there it looks like around aperture 6.9 and manual focus 77 gives us this cool depth of field if i want to come over here to i believe it's under visual effects and i want to add some exponential height fog in here i'm going to come up zero this out and actually you can mess with the fog density there in the background stuff like that if i scroll down come down here to volumetric fog it gives us a little bit more fog in our scene here then i think the last thing i'm going to do from here is just do a little bit of color correction nothing too crazy in here so if i come back to my post process volume just scroll down here let's say to where it says color grading so right here under contrast i'm going to click that on maybe let's add up the contrast a little bit then our shadows maybe come down to contrast again let's see what we could get there there you go so i'm not going to get too crazy with it but i mean something there looks really cool if i scroll down we can actually start turning on like some ray tracing and stuff like that so actually i'm going to turn on ambient occlusion for both of these let's see if i scroll this up and down you can actually see it in his armor there if i turn it up so we have some cool ambient occlusion going on in there i want to enable ray tracing ambient occlusion here and then for global illumination we don't want to use the ray tracing one that one's still kind of beta and sometimes it will crash and so another way we could do it is actually go to screen space global illumination which works a lot better so if i come over here to edit come down to my project settings and then i'm actually going to click on all settings and i'm just going to search for screen global so there we go so under lighting we have screen space global illumination and let me actually drag this over see if it makes a big difference here and yeah you can actually see it inside of the highlights here inside the shadows it actually makes a good difference there so i'm going to leave that enabled there and then just scroll through these settings a little bit more so let's say for reflectance i'm going to enable ray tracing because if i go to screen space you can see what big of a difference that makes so we want to have ray tracing left on there and then i think that's basically all we want to do so translucency don't really need so that's basically it from there so if i click on play here there we go we have master chief just kind of breathing inside of the scene again you want to do some weight painting so it's not stretching out the helmet and some of the armor there and everything Mixamo is good for a quick rig but it's not perfect you still have to go in and do some post work there and so basically let me show you how we could just render this out for real time so i'm going to come over the window come down to cinematic movie render queue and then right here where it says render i'm going to click on that and click on my timeline here and then right here where it says unsave config i'm just going to click on this and we could do a jpeg sequence if you want or i'm going to delete that come over to settings we have some other options here we could actually do apple prores we could do an exr we could do a png in which if you want to do alpha channels or things of that nature you want to do an exr and I'm just gonna keep this one simple. So I'm gonna click off a multi-layer. And then for export, this is where you save it out to where you wanna render to. So I could click on this and maybe let's make a, 
new renders folder double click on that we'll click select folder and then right here for output resolution i like exporting out at 4k so basically i'm just going to do multiply by two there we go so now that's at 4k and that's basically all i'm going to change inside of there and so again if you want to look through some of these settings i actually do have tutorials on the breakdown on how some of these things work so i would definitely go to my youtube channel and check some of that stuff out but for simplicity's sake let's click on accept and then i think we're ready to render out so i'm going to click on render local then after a few moments you'll have your exr file which i brought mine into after effects just to kind of add some color correction to it and then this was my final result out of unreal engine so thank you to all the people that hit me up on social media asking me how I put this together. Hopefully this helped you out. And again, all the links that I talked about here inside this tutorial, I'll leave down below. So make sure you check out the comments or your descriptions. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. And as always, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you guys again. I'll see you soon. Take care.